Hello, I'm Celia Popovich. Hi, I'm Fiona Smart. Celia, we're, we're talking here about the resource that we've created, Educational Developers Thinking Aloud. I wonder if we should begin by talking about why we did it in the first place. Yeah, so several years ago, uh, you and I were talking about the need to, um, to provide training or advice, resources, information for people new to educational development. And we were quite surprised, really, at how little there is or was out there. Mm -hmm. And we did some research, we talked to lots of people, and anyway, a number of different things happened. And one of, the, one of our aims was to write a book, a primer for educational developers. So that's what we started doing. And then we decided that maybe a book wasn't the best, the best format. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that was a really important part of our decision making because I suppose we were quite traditional in that we were used to the idea of books and, and creating books. But then we came across this idea of, of creating an e-resource. And I know we continually play with what is this thing that we've created. And maybe it doesn't matter quite as much what we've called it, but it's, it's how it's emerged. And we'll talk a little bit about our contributors in a moment. But what we've got is something that's dynamic. Um, it, it's, it, we can adapt it if we find that some of the content maybe isn't uh, in tune with what's changing mm -hmm. or if we need more content so I, I think that's great just tell us about some of those images because whenever I look at them they make me smile yeah. so what we've got here I've got the the, the page up um, sharing the screen with you all and we've basically so they're called chapters because this is the history really the you know that it started off as a, as a book and we came up with various topics and then we approached an illustrator a very talented young woman called um, Liz Smith who chance who translated the sort of general gist of each of the chapters into a, a little illustration so we've got here this one there's a person in a taxi um, and that is the answering the question so we haven't really addressed yet what is educational development uh -huh, um, yeah. educational developers work with faculty and TAs and anybody who who is involved in teaching and learning in universities and colleges with an aim to improving what we all do but trying to explain that to people outside <laughs> the field you know it, it's like for me it's always in a taxi what taxi yeah. asks you what do you do for a living you go um Shall I yeah. make something up or shall I try and explain? <laughs> anyway, so there's all sorts of images here. Um, but that actually raises the point, doesn't it, about, you know, who this resource is for? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And, and I think when we first started, we had a very clear audience in our mind and that it was the early career um, educational developer because that's where we'd seen a gap. And, and, I think it is also true that even now we know that that is the primary audience for what we've created, but we've already done some testing and, and we know that there is, there is content in, in the chapters and probably, especially in the real deal, but also in fake news, where there's some really interesting, quite short pieces that can be used widely within higher education within tertiary education uh, i know we all call it different things but actually even broader than that and um you know the, the we've got the grow model that i talk about in an earlier chapter and i know that's now being used in a training context so i think because the resource is, is open. We've, we've created it so that it is creative commons. I'm not quite sure that that's the correct expression, commons. Yes, right. um, yeah. but, but we've got it so that it can be used by various people for different reasons. But we do know that we created it for those early career academic developers to try and help them. And we've got some early feedback, haven't we? We and have. The people are liking it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, there's a couple of things I wanted to say. I was, I was just scrolling down a little bit as you were talking to show, you know, that there are, well, there's 13 chapters altogether at the moment. Um, but the fake news that, that you mentioned, Fiona, I, I love that picture. It just makes me laugh yeah. every time I see it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Disrespectful. But anyway, the point of this is that we asked um, uh, fellow developers what, yeah. uh, what were the kind of pet theories that, that get promoted that actually don't, aren't based in, in research. Um, and learning um, learning styles is the one that almost everybody raises because that's yes. something that somehow got 
captured, just captured the popular imagination, I think, and is used widely across the world, but actually there's very little evidence for most of those, um, those learning theories. Uh, but there are many others. And so this page is all about, it, it, uh, there, was a, there was an issue when we started using the phrase fake news that people, of course, we all had a conversation about it. And some people really objected because it carries the notion that people deliberately mislead. Now, yeah. that's not what we're talking about here. People aren't deliberately misleading, but there can be um, a take up of ideas that, as I say, aren't based on evidence. And so that's what we've done a roundup of those here. So that was the fake yeah. news. And then the other but weren't one... you surprised? I was just going to say, Celia, weren't you surprised um, at the point when um, we asked people to communicate? I'm sorry, there's noises in the background, but I think we'll manage with those. When we put out the call, oh, we're not going to manage those. Okay, go on, keep going. We'll, we'll edit it, won't we? At the point when we put out the call to the, our communities to say, tell us about the idea, you know, the one that really winds you up or ends up in, in some sticky conversations with people. My goodness me, were there loads of ideas that came forward. Were you surprised? Because I nearly fell off my seat when I saw yeah, all of them. I, re I really was, yes, yeah. And then digging down as a result of that, um, finding, you know, just finding the evidence or the lack of it was quite, quite surprising and shocking, really. So I think that's another, another, if I say side issue, it makes it sound like unimportant, but actually I think it's quite important outcome of doing this project is that we're starting to, to form the, um, the canon of, of knowledge. And, and in doing that, we can start to identify where there are gaps. So while, you know, this absolutely was written initially with new and, and, frankly people who aren't yet educational developers yes, in yeah. that original audience there's material in here that we already know with feedback from other people and actually <laughs> from myself um that it's of use to people regardless of your your experience you know and and i think the other piece to say about why we wanted we just we moved from a book format to to this this uh, uh, oer was that it gives us the opportunity to continue to expand in the future yeah so yeah work, you know but there might be more in <laughs> this baby um, might grow. But, you know, I, I think that's right. And if we, we just contemplate, uh, you know, changes that occur within the higher education context and how that changes emphasis, um, you know, blended and online education suddenly becomes more important than it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and there will be things like for, for us in the UK, there's, there's a swell around decolonizing the curriculum, which other cultures, have, other countries that have been part of for, for longer than we have. So we can expand and we can develop it. I particularly love the fact that we can use it differently. Mm -hmm. So that we we've created it so that you can read it all on your own and you don't have to do anything. You can just read it on your own. Equally, we've got the potential for people to talk because there's the discussion areas that people can come in on. And I know we're going to have to encourage people to do that because that's almost the tradition of discussion spaces. But we, you know, the having meetings that are organised around chapters or parts of chapters is something that we have explored and that we've already got some positive feedback that people want to do that so so i'm just thinking about all of the options that are open to us that maybe don't come from a book and uh, that hard copy book or even an ebook we absolutely. seem to have something else here yeah what absolutely. do you think absolutely and and i and just going back to your point about the grow model and using that in another context that okay you can photocopy pages of a book mm. but this literally you can cut and paste it and, and use it um yeah. everything is co covered by um creative commons 4 so you acknowledge yeah. it's from, from here but you can do what you what you want with it so yes it's the it's a growing and then the other piece about the dialogue that's the bit that i would i really hope will take yeah. off yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and I think another one of our surprises is that w when we first started working with this, we were thinking of the UK Canadian context. But we, we've got people who um, have supported us in this endeavour who are outside of those two geographical spaces and we also know that we've got people who are interested in it um, I've got a colleague in in China who's going to be promoting it to educational developers in that context but you've got other contacts as well yes, that are suggesting broad-based interest absolutely yeah we've had um, well both contributors and um, 
uh, and interest from people in Australia, New Zealand, um, Canada, which is where I'm based at the moment, um, the US, um, Belgium. Um, yeah. A large group of educational developers in, in Belgium who've been really supportive of this. Um, I'm trying to remember where else we've got, well, the UK as well, of course. Um, so, yeah, so we're hoping that this will take off and be and enable us to have um, not just conversations amongst educational developers, but educational developers from different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and, and as we're recording this, we're, you know, several months into the COVID-19 pandemic. And in Canada alone, we estimate there have been 300 new positions created to support mm -hmm. the pivot to online teaching. Yeah. Um, now, many of those 300 people must be new to the field I, or new in some to some extent so yep. in canada alone you know that the, i think there's a there's a, a, num a large number of people who we hope will not just use the, the resources but engage and discuss and have conversations yeah. which in turn will perhaps lead to into um you know between country conversations as well as between institutions yeah, and, and I think it's it's a hope that we had a wee while ago that we maybe want to come back to again is the potential for, for that enhanced networking and even possible mentoring of people who can meet each other and have conversations because of this space. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you mentioned contributors, and, and I think, it, again, it's important to note that there are contributors in, in our resource who are not from educational development at all. You know that the the audience is broad in the first place and it, and it, isn't it great to see that list of people who, who've been part of creating this um well i i i think it's just it's rich and it's dynamic and it's its potential that i don't even think we know just how much of a potential we have here and it's it's something i'm really proud of i don't know about you Oh gosh, totally, totally. And unfortunately, I think we've run out of time for our, our little slot here. Um, well, that was fun. Such fun. <laughs> so I hope, I hope um, we've answered some sort of initial questions you might have about, about the resource. And just one thing to, as a takeaway for me is, although this was written for educational developers and a particular group of them, um, there's stuff in here that will be of use to anybody interested in teaching and learning in higher education so please don't think this is only for educational developers it's for everybody yeah and um if you want to just use the discussion spaces we'd love to have conversations with you in there so please enjoy thanks for your time <laughs>